Okay, cool. So um, this week I was really just kind of going to go over how I use my phone and Weeble in my phone. All right. Um, so I actually had a friend that I was trading with that um, had actually seen the options graph in, um, in um, I wonder how I can turn my notifications off too, because that's just going to keep going off. Um, but uh, yeah, so they didn't know that there was an options graph in here. So when you come into um, Webull, uh -huh. you come in here and there's that little options tab right here. You can you can swipe the screen as well uh, up at the top. Uh -huh. like if you swipe the chart, it'll go to this yeah. page. So the options uh, chain is going to be right here. Uh -huh. And then uh, when you let's get right in the money here. So when you see this little line where the stock price is, that's basically just letting you know. Um, man, how do I turn my notifications off? That's just going to keep going off. Hold on, let me let me do this for a second. Notifications. Show previews. Uh, can't just like say off. Okay, well, I'm gonna go back to this. Okay, cool. So uh, this stock price right here in the center, this is gonna be where the actual price of the stock is. Uh -huh. This uh, 657, depending on which way you're going, that's gonna be in the money or out of money. Now for a call, that's going to be, uh, let's see, in the money because it's already past 657.50. Got right? you. The stock price mm -hmm. is 659. Uh, the 657.50 on the right side, though, right over here on the right, this is going to be put. So this is out of the money on the right side uh, of 657 because technically the put wants the stock to go down. So we're to, uh, so in this case, it would be the inverse of that. So on the left side at 657, you have in the money because these prices have been passed. Right. And on the right side, it's 657 and below. Uh, you're going to be looking at puts that are out of the money. Anything that's on the right side and above uh, 657. So when you're looking at 657, 655, 652, those are out of the money. But for 655, 652, those are in the money for the call. So you understand just the uh, the basics of the call and the uh, the puts? Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. So when you actually click on these, I don't know if you've seen these. Have you seen an options graph before? Um, like, like an option one? I've seen people use it before, but I've never known how to like access it. Okay, yeah, well on Webull, you can do that here. All right, so like I said, you go to the option chain, you press this, um, that, that top um, tab right there that says options. Once you find the one you wanna look at, let's say, all right, let's do something that, you know, is in my realm. Like Alibaba fell again to um, down here. So yeah. what what I uh, what I did was you come in here, you look at the options, and you're like, huh, I wonder what's going on. You know, and so for me, right, uh, when the when 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 the market opened, Alibaba was I believe it was like two fifteen or something. Oh, it was two seventeen. Well, let's actually let's look at what today started as. The open was, yeah, it was 2.15 at the open. Um, so it was 2.15 at the open. And basically from that point, it just dropped, okay? So when you're looking at calls, because the price dropped, the call, uh, these, <laughs> these notifications are gonna go crazy. Um, the call is going to, um, is gonna be going down, right? Because at the market open, we opened up at 6.15, and then from there, we dropped to 209 and the low of the day was gonna be 209, yeah. And you can see the low right at the top, right? So it's got the high and the low, and then it's got the volume as well. Now, when you open up and you press that little right, uh, that arrow down there, it'll open up this menu, right? So that little arrow that's next to the high, low and volume at the top, right? You just press that, it'll move this down. So you can see things like uh, average volume, which is to your top right. It's the second one on the top right. If you can see the average volume, it says that the average volume for Alibaba is only 15 million, right? So on this day, we can see that the volume was 23 million, okay? So number one, that's an unusual amount of option off the bat, 
right? So when you're looking at just stocks in general or options or anything, what you're looking for is volume. We want volume. Number one, you don't want anything in terms of volume below 1 million because uh, there's just not enough transactions going on to guarantee that your contracts or your stocks or shares or whatever you're trading can be sold in the amount of time and uh, the best I guess, uh, reward and uh, when uh, risk reward ratio for you, because sometimes with lower volumes, you can have larger spreads, which create just a lot more volatility in the options that you're trading. And that can be dangerous. So always make sure that number one, you're getting good volume. Okay. So when we look at this, we're looking at the average volume. It says it was 15 and we can see that the volume today was 23. All right, so number one, that's an unusual amount of volume. If you scroll all the way down on the charts homepage, we can see what this volume was doing for the day. All right, so in, in terms of like large scale orders, they were selling, okay? So a lot of this volume came from the fact that people were releasing and selling shares. Okay? Got you. So when we opened up at the market, obviously I've already got these, these little orange lines you see here on my screen. I, can you see? Can you see a yeah. mouse at all, or you only see? Yeah, I can see. I can see your, your, the cursor moving, and I can see the graph also. So you can see my mouse right here circling. Yes. Over here. Yep. Oh my god, that's perfect. Okay. So this orange line right here, that's an alert. Okay. That's an alert okay. to tell me that it failed to the price that I wanted. Now that that price is there because of what previously happened here before, right? So there was a point at which I said, well, dang, alert me if it gets below here. And it did. And then I was like, well, worst case scenario, definitely hit me up if we make it down here. But all the time, I want to be alerted when Alibaba comes right here because we see what happens when it comes there. Right. You know, it just bounces off of that where you whether you're right here and catch that or whether you got it again and caught that. Right. And this was actually when we were talking about Alibaba right now, to be honest, I did not I did not know it was going to run to 230. There's just no way I just I've been here before and I've seen what it does from 210. And I just I I just play it, you know, because I, I already know from previous history. Right. So if I go to the day, it'll be give us a bigger picture of what's going on when we reach these levels, right? So when we got down here, we bounced back up. When we came here again, we bounced back up. When we came here again, we bounced back up, right? So every time Alibaba want to come back down here, I'll play it, especially on options, which is great because we can buy time, okay? So if we know what happens when we're down here, we can really start kind of starting an entry in a play like today i actually entered a trade um for alibaba and my robin hood and um let me zoom in and show where i kind of messed up so basically i was already holding these um shares whenever it comes down here i have these shares so that it will let me know that hey you are back at break even so like anytime i buy i'll always keep a couple because I want those shares to let me know, like, okay, well, I remember I was this much up on these, right, when I sold uh, some shares, and now here we are, at I'm break even on the day. So when I saw that my Alibaba shares had come back to break even, and then they were losing, right, I immediately come, came in and bought at least a contract at where my position was. Right. But then I actually lost I lost money on this right here. But then I bought another contract right here because I was like, well, I know what happens when we get to 210. Right. And so that's where patience comes in, because, look, all right, this is I, I, I'm learning my own lessons here, because the fact that I even had these alerts here previously from where we had traded before. Right. I should have known better than to try to jump this. And I always try to tell people, don't think that you can beat the trend, right? If, 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 if resistance and support is down here, don't think you about to stop it right here, right? So if I already know and my alarms are set here and my alerts are set here, I need to be patient and wait on that. But what was cool was as I lost on the one contract that I had, I knew I needed to buy more because I had the leverage right here. So- <laughs> when I, I literally was able to come out of the hole with this because I was able to get my money back from where I lost it with the one, but the two actually got me more leverage to come out of that hole with 
um, yeah, just more leverage, right? So looking at this, you can go into the options. So first off, I will say this again, it started at 215 and it dropped to 209 for the day. So basically if you were buying a call at open, it was losing money until, let's see what time that is, until 1230, okay? Got it. 130 uh, Eastern. So we'll go look in at the options and I'll show, uh, this is the reason why I'm showing this is because I wanna show people how much correlation there is between um, the options graph and the, the graph for the, uh, the stock, right? So instead of trying to beat Alibaba, I should have just been patient, right? So when the day started with, for this one in particular, and I want to note this is too, you can see the one day, the, uh, the five day, the one month. Sometimes you will come in and there will only be a one month, right? And I, if it's that, I really don't like trading it. Like if I can only see the one month, I, I just, I don't even trade it. Is really. this the options? Is this the options chart? Correct. Correct. Oh, wait. How did you get to this? I took bro, bro, I got you. Okay. So, you so just... remember when we went to the options, right? Uh -huh. And we were looking at the strike prices. Now, when you tap on one, okay, it uh -huh. does this. All right. Now, if you double tap on it, it'll open up the graph. So oh, here's okay. the thing, man. This 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 can only be seen on Robinhood after you buy the dang contract, and then Robinhood will only show you that day, right? Because you just bought it. So we, uh, I can't show you what it did in a week, right? Because you just bought it. You have just gotten access to this chart. But with Weeple, bro, I can see. I can see. Okay, so right here. This contract, my 212 contract, right, that I purchased in um, Robinhood, on 627, this contract was worth 1700 okay? So if I go back to Alibaba and I say, well, on 627, what price was Alibaba, right? On 627, dang, is there even a 627, maybe? All right, so 628, 625, I guess that 627 just might be in there for the option, but the 628, the option, basically Alibaba had hit its highest, okay? So if Alibaba makes another run to 230, right? That's basically saying that this, this option has the potential to become $1,700. You see what I'm saying? Because that graph was just the same, okay? So, What's essentially happening is the same thing. So like when we talked about this particular option, it was probably around here. And then uh, Alibaba ran up to 230, right? And then it maxed this out, right? And then this thing came right back on down. So Got what it. I'm looking at, right, is the fact that, wow, we're even lower than we were initially. But the reason to that is that because if you look at the max, Essentially, options just now, this one in particular is going to show it as good because Alibaba just shot up. But most options, if you look at the max, um, it's going to show that it's just been declining. But if you look at this, this is re more realistic of what you'll see when a contract comes in its month. OK, now Alibaba had this hump here because, like I said, it just shot up. But for the most part, these contracts just continue to lose uh, value if they do not stay in the money. So in this one in particular, you can actually see one day. The one day lets me know what happened in today, right? So you can get volume in here. You can see those little volume spikes down there. You also have indicators. So I, um, I can't say that I trade exclusively off of these indicators, but they do help. Like when I came in and bought this contract, right? I'm at the bottom of RSI and stuff right here. So I was like, I really don't even care if I lose. Well, actually I bought the contract a little more like right here because I did pay, let me see, look at uh, the price. Cause I paid about 200 for my first one. So yeah, I actually bought the contract here. Right. Because I'm thinking, oh, we're good. We're good. And then that thing just kept on riding down. But when I came and looked, I saw right here that my RSI was pretty low. My stochastic was flatlining. So I felt confident about buying another contract. 
And it kind of just went sideways. And then towards the end of the day, I was able to get some money back. Right. So um, do I follow these indicators on the graph? No, but are they helpful? Heck yeah. Because if I come in here and to be honest, if, if VWAP, if, if I'm under VWAP, like in the case of this, this white line right here, um, um, in the case of VWAP, um, this is being pressed down, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm noticing that, but I also understand what happens to Alibaba when we get to this price, right? So if I understand that, then I'm putting the two graphs together to understand, okay, if I buy this contract and I assume that Alibaba can make whatever move to whatever direction, I can open back this contract and say that, well, when Alibaba was a certain price, this particular um, option was whatever price, right? So maybe when um, Alibaba was, um, let's see, what date is this? This is the first. So on the first, this contract was worth 625. So if we go back to Alibaba and see what price Alibaba was on 620, or that was 71, excuse me. Uh, that was um, the first. So on this particular day, if we are at, let's see what this line is right here. It looks like 220, 222 in that range because that's where it closed. So that's where the, um, the contract ended. So let's say Alibaba ran back up to 220. Well, my, my $100 contracts could potentially become $600 now, but that's the move I have to expect in order to make that kind of profit, right? Because on this particular day, the 7-1, so on this Thursday, the close was 221. And on the um, options contract for that particular strike price, you can see that the um, price on that day for 71 was 625. So you see why I'm seeing that and how I'm kind of gauging that? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so um, when you're looking at it like this, it kind of helps you just navigate your risk to reward ratio, right? So if I come in and I look at something, let's say, uh, let's take Apple, for example. Let's say you're just like, man, Apple's going up and I think it could go more and you're asking yourself, should I buy in now, right? Okay, so. Apple right now has hit its its peak, right? So it's it's making it's I don't think it's making new highs, but it's certainly close to them. Yeah. So you're uh, we look at this, you can see the 52 week high, which is the second row, second um, item. You can see that the 52 week high is 145. OK, so we're pretty close there right now. So we're getting to a point where we may hit a reversal. But, I, I, you know, people may want to send it to 145 or 150 before they're done, right? So in the case of this, if you're just like, yeah, I want to, I want to ride all the Apple all the way up. Well, you can come here and look at, uh, let's look at the 143. And if you look at the lifetime of this, you can see that this thing really just started. I don't even think, the cool thing about options is that they can become like available recently. So this option doesn't necessarily look like most options. Like, like I said, when options, a call in particular is, or just any options are, are going to lose value over time. Because like when you buy them in the future, like when you're buying time on the contract, there's value in that. But as that, that theta wears away at it, the actual value of the contract starts to depreciate, right? So in this case, Apple just, it's another thing where another stock just took off. So in this case, when Apple was at, um, on June 30th, this contract was only 10 cents, right? So if we go look at what price Apple was on June 30th, um, let's see, June 30th. June 30th, Apple closed at 136. So um, basically this move that Apple made after that close on 630 caused this option to go from 10 cents all the way up to, let's go back to the option chain. Option. To 84 cents, right? From 10 cents to 84 cents? Yeah. So you're looking at what, 700, 800%? So um, that's what moves these options. Now, this particular option was probably out of the money, which made it only 10 cents, 
right? And so Apple had to make a move like this in order for this thing to even make money. Because you can see that before that, you were only looking at seven cents and riding it to 16 cents, right? Mm -hmm. That was really all you were going to do. But after that little 630 and it did a little drop, after that, it just ran on up, right? So, and what's crazy is the amount of volume that's in this particular one as well, 208,000 volume uh, as of today. So either people are really bullish on Apple or they were selling this contract or something, because I mean, dang, if you bought it at 10 cents, 20 cents, even 30 cents, you know, you probably bought quite a few of them. So any of that would have added up to some really good profit at minimum a hundred percent, you know? So that's all I always recommend coming in and looking at this, because if I open this chart up and I'm at 84, right, and I look at this, this because you can drop this arrow down as well, and it'll tell you the day's range. Well, this, this contract in today actually went pretty, pretty high. Oh, wow. So it shot up to 134, right? So, and we can only see that because we looked at the day's range, right? So today, this contract actually shot up here. Right. And at some point it may have even started. Yeah. At the, at the beginning of the day, this contract, if you would have just came in and open on this contract. Um, could have bought this contract around 30 cents, which is $30. And then boom, that joker ran all the way up to a dollar. You could have gotten a hundred bucks per contract. Nice. All right. So and that was just in the morning move, right? So that the market opened up right here, 9.30 to what time? Wow, that's just one hour. That ain't even an hour. That's the first 30 minutes. Market opened right here at 9.30. This joker took off in 30 minutes. And then boom, somebody got $100 per contract if they bought that, right? So that's why I say it doesn't, one, number one, it doesn't take that long to trade. OK, like I literally like if I feel really confident about something, I'll do it at the market open because like look at what happens after the rest of that. Like and that's why y'all see me kind of trading like really early, like I'll trade like the first 30 minutes or an hour. And then after that, I'm, I, you don't see me talking for the rest of the day unless I'm holding something through the day. But that's only with the expectation that is it could keep going up now with something like this, this uh, contract in particular, because it's out of the money. And it ran like Apple ran up to 143 in the day. So this became in the money, right? This is when it was in the money. And then as Apple kind of faded off of 143, this contract immediately started losing money, right? So by 11 o'clock, uh, these people had started over basically. So that's why I, I'm in and out sometimes with these things. Because if you're out of the money, your contract loses money. I don't care if it's still close. If that joker starts to stutter step and go sideways and you still ain't crossed the line, look at this. These people, if you held this contract, basically you made money, right? You came in the day, made money, and then you were like, man, I'm going to hold this because Apple going to go to 150. And then for the rest of the day, you just lost all that money, <laughs> right? So it's important for people to come in and take a look at these types of things because, um, yeah, about 1230, they had given all that profit back, right? And then you got it back some more or you, let's say you missed it and you want another ride. That's why it's always good to be patient too, because these, these options work with a, a lot of different value, right? There's a demand in here as well. So in the morning, the demand was extremely high to send Apple in this direction, right? Now, once that demand has been exhausted and there's no more buyers to send that price up, well, your option's not that valuable anymore, right? If you have a 143 option, why would I pay you to, why would I buy an option uh, strike price of 143 from you if I can just go buy the stock right now for 142? Right. So that's what makes these things lose value. But when they're in the money, they gain value. But once they come back out, they're back to just normal. Right. But this also gives you another chance to either take two trips or this is where you say, well, dang, I know what kind of profit I can get. Maybe I can average down here and ride this up with some more leverage. Right. So maybe you started the day off with maybe one contract or two contracts and then it, you gave all that profit back. But you were like, dang, I think this can go back. Well, here's your chance to buy back in, 
right? And that's how I come in. And I'm, I might just start with one or two contracts, but if I ever go down, I know that I have another opportunity to catch something on the, um, uh, on the next wave. Because these options, um, like I said, the value changes so rapidly. So never chase these things. Because imagine you being like, oh man, Apple's going to make its run. And you're one of these people that may have bought in here being like, oh man, I'm gonna make a run. And then, yeah, you made some money and you got comfortable, but then next thing you know, boom, it hits your break even and now you're losing money. And you're like, dang, should I hold, should I hold? So I always recommend people come in and they look at these. Like I said, I, I do use the, um, the indicators on here just in terms of like a respect. Because if you notice, like even when the stochastic is down, when it sends it back up, like you can see that this follows the same trend. Right. So if you're maxed out on the stochastics, you're eventually going to give that back or it has to reset. Right. So you're maxed out here. It resets. What's cool is that it bottomed out. If you look at here, right, the stochastic bottomed out over here, but at a higher price than here. OK, so you notice that it bottomed out here and it bottomed out here. But look at where it was here and look at where it was here. That's why I always look at the stochastics, because the stochastics will literally reset itself. It will be like, okay, we're at the bottom of this bottom, but it's not the same bottom as that. So if I see something like this, then that lets me know that we're going to have to reverse from where we are here. And that's exactly what happened, right? So then when you start to, it starts to max out again, it'll return. And even here, it created a different low, even though we had the same stochastic uh, readings, this created a, a different low on the actual uh, price of the option, right? And so I, I'm always coming in and respecting these as well because the MACD will kind of show you that a little more in terms of the price. So it's like this price was dipping and then it dipped even more, but the stochastics will actually tell you when the momentum is changing. So in this case, you were flatlining. You know that at some point you can enter in here and then once you come out of here, this is you taking this. So um, I definitely use these. I always tap into the, um, the options chart before I buy. And my main thing is looking at the day's range because if I come in here and I'm the low, um, I don't mind buying a little more contracts than I usually would, but that's not the best sign. Like if you come in and you're at the low of the day, that's not saying that it's not gonna go lower. So make sure that, you know, you're in a comfortable position to enter this trade, but it's even better that you hit the low of the day, right? Because there's been times where I'll put this in here and, um, you know, you think you're buying at the low and then it drops another 10 or 15 cents, right? But the fact that I'm already in at the low, I don't mind either averaging myself down or giving myself more room on my stop loss, okay? Because if I know that the day's low is 29, Okay, and I enter at 84, where there's 60 cents or $60 technically worth of loss that I could deal with if this thing decides to reset. See what I'm saying? But if I come in and I'm at the day's uh, low, well, dang, okay, well, you know, it's one of them times where you ask, well, how low can you go? Because of all the other indicators are saying that I feel comfortable here and I enter into this trade. Well, I, I'm gonna give you a little more room to fall because I know that in order for them to take me out of this stop loss, they've got to work, right? And they've got to really drive this against me. But if I enter at 84 cents and I know that the, <laughs> there's a low of 29 for the day, this thing might run back to 30 cents and then below it. And then I'm sitting there holding it. And at this point I've lost, you know, almost all of <laughs> my money, right? <laughs> So I always come in here and look at the day's range. And then this too will let me know how high I can go. You know, because if I feel like this is something that can bounce back from the low that it had in the morning, then I feel confident that I can get this, right? Or maybe even the open, um, because they'll have the open or the previous close here. So if I know that the day's range has gotten here before, that's saying that there's a high. But if a stock opened, at a certain price, let's say for instance, Alibaba, it opens at 215 and then it drops to 209. Well, whatever this option opened as, I can assume that if 
Alibaba can run back to 215, then my option price can get back to whatever it was when it opened, right? Especially if it beats the expiration. Now, if I can't get there before the expiration, which is right here, um, you're, you're, um, yeah, you're just going to lose. Uh, just in the case of this, like I said, when, when they opened the market, all these people were winners, uh, but then they gave it right back by 12 uh, or 1130. So um, I always come and look at these. There's also the five day. Five day kind of gives you the big picture, like what's really been going on with this thing. And uh, for this in particular, it looks like it's a new option. Yeah, so I don't even think brokerages were thinking about 143. This just happened to be added uh, as an extension. Um, and people were just waiting on this to break, right? So they were probably just adding up, adding up, adding up, loading up on this. And then once Apple took off, you know, they were just sitting here waiting on this. And that's, that's this is just one of those out of the money type plays where you would be like, I'm going to go buy the 143 because I can afford it because it's only $17 or it's only $30. And then next thing you know, you made a hundred bucks. All right. So I always tell people with options, you can make money with no money, but it can only work in your favor if the stock moves in your direction at that pace that you need. Because even if these people made this money, unless they were in here at you know 930, getting this profit, uh, then they lost it. Right. So um, they didn't essentially lose all of it if they were in it from here, but they still gave back quite a majority of it, especially sometime in the middle of the day. And worst case, if they got out here and then the thing went back up. Right. So I'm always down to take profits. But at the same time, let's say I take profits on a couple contracts right here. I might hold one. And then if I see I'm coming back to break even and I feel like this could keep going, like I said, there's always opportunities where you can come in and get another entry. But even look at how this thing bounced off of the 200 EMA right here. Obviously, this is short term, but still it came in, bounced off this long term type of EMA. So, um, yeah, I, I always use these indicators, come in and look at this information. If you scroll down to the bottom, bottom, you actually see your delta. Your delta is going to be what the price, um, this is going to be the point at which your option premium increases for every dollar that the stock goes up. Uh, the technical definition is like um, the increase in premium for every point the underlying asset moves, right? So that's saying that for every dollar, um, that Apple goes up, I will get 36 cents in my premium. So for every dollar that Apple goes up, you will get $36 in profit. And that number uh, changes as you go up, right? So if you look at the option chain, I'm not sure if I have Delta listed here. Uh, yeah, I do. So you can see that the Delta increases from this 36 to 50. And as it goes up, you continue to. So every dollar that Apple goes up above, they get 88 bucks, right? That's not, is, is that above the strike price or just in regardless the... That's just, that's just saying, I mean, technically it is above the strike price, but technically it's not considering that because sometimes you can have different spreads, right? Okay. Because there may be a, um, there may be a, um, a, um, a, one, a 50 cent spread, a 250 spread, a $5 spread, a $10 spread. So it's not necessarily just over that particular strike price, but it is saying that for every point, so for every dollar that this asset moves, you're going to get this in premium. Uh -huh. So if it moves, say, a half a dollar, so if it just moves 50 cent, you can assume that you're going to get this um, half of uh, 36, which is going to be what, uh, 18? Oh, yeah, $18. So you get $18 for every 50 cents you move, right? So if you bought this contract and then Apple moved up 50 cents, you're going to get $18 right there, right? If Apple moves a dollar, this starts to increase when, because if Apple moves a dollar, now you're in the money, right? So then maybe your profit goes from 36 now to 50. So for every dollar that it moves, this continues to grow as well because your Delta is growing in the favor of you because it's saying that, wow, you're, you're more valuable, right? So these Deltas are lower, down here because they're not that valuable. Like I'm not going to give you that much money for every dollar that uh, Apple moves 
because we still have to get here, right? But for these people, it's like, well, the further we make it away from you, the more money I'm going to give you, right? And it just continues to grow. And eventually it taps out, though. You see it just kind of flatlines it after a while. You see um, where it just goes, nah, 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 nah. It just flatlines after a while. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely what you want to focus on as well, because this is going to tell me my uh, risk to reward ratio, right? Like if I'm paying $27 for this and I'm already out of the money and I only stand to make, uh, where's my Delta? $11 for every dollar that it moves, right? That means that, I mean, one, I need Apple to move a dollar, but I'm only going to make 11 bucks off of that dollar move. So yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like, well, you just you just pretty much just risk losing pretty much all of that because the chances of Apple getting there may not happen, and then you just end up losing your money. And what's the worst case is that people will actually buy more contracts down here because they're cheaper, but essentially, you're only loading up more ammunition to lose if you don't make it, okay? Now... If you happen to, let's say you, this, this is what happened to the people in this 143, how they went from 10 cents to 84. Let's say Apple actually goes to 150 this week and you went and bought this $9 contract. Let's say you just went and bought 10 of these contracts, right? You went and bought 10 and you're like, I got $90 to lose if we don't make it, right? So $90 would be your bet here, but you have $90 to lose because look at this. It's telling you what your max loss is right here. OK, so if you buy this, you can only lose that. Can't lose more money. That's what I love about options. Like I, I can only lose what I want to bet. Like, you know, keep, people always ask me, like, are you are you not, like where where are your losses? Are you taking losses? And it's like I'm only in the will. I already know what I'm going to lose. So like, let's say I wanted to come by this contract. I'll put a stop loss two dollars on this. Right. So, and let's say, for instance, I wanted to buy something different, right? I mean, it's the same thing. You're going to lose $85 here. Well, I don't want to lose $85. So you got $3 to be right. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to put a stop loss under you. But, um, and in the case of this, let's say just, I wanted to buy this contract. Uh, uh, like I said, remember that you're looking at what happened with this. Okay. So if I know the low for the day is 29 and I sit here and I say, I want to trade this particular option. Well, if I know the low is 29 and I'm putting up 85 and I could lose this, well, I certainly don't want to just lose $50 off the bat if this thing just turns sideways on me. So I can put a stop loss on this, right? So once you buy it, um, you can come in and you can say stop right here, this stop loss, or you can do a stop limit. A stop limit will at least allow you to name your price, okay? So if you come in here and this is, remember, don't, you wouldn't buy a stop limit. You would be selling this contract after buying it, okay? You would never sell it to open it, okay? Uh, I'll show you what happens when you do that. But if you come in here, you're gonna, uh, once you own a contract, I'll come in and I'll do sell. I don't do stop limit, but if you wanna guarantee a price for yourself, you can do that. So you can say, hey, okay, uh, I've made my money. I bought this contract at 10 cents and now I wanna make sure that I do not lose any money from here. So you can say, okay, we are at 84 cents. If this thing drops below 84 or 83, sell me out at 80, right? And so your stop price will trigger this order, okay? So you don't want them to be too close. Honestly, this is a little too close. If this was my contract and I went from $10 to 80, I probably would do something like this, but I would be afraid that it would go from 83 to 79 and then just start running because it's not gonna sell your contract for anything other than 80. So if somebody's not asking for 80 in the minute that it passes you, uh, it'll just keep going down. Next thing you know, you open this thing and it's, back to 10 cents and your order for 80 still sitting here so sounds i like, don't i don't sounds do like go ahead i was, I was gonna say it sounds like robin robin hood yep <laughs> yep that's robin hood that's why i don't do stop limits man but what i'll do is uh i'll do a stop loss okay stop loss just says all right joker if you start moving backwards just let it go let it go. I mean, it's going to sell it for, you know, whatever price. And sometimes you're going to lose some profit, 
But if it's something good with a, a, a decent spread, um, like if it's got a large spread, let's say the spread on the strike prices is like $5. And then when you look at the, um, the bid in the ass, there's like a difference of like 30 cents or 40 cents. You don't, you don't want to do a stop a loss on that. You want to just, you might want to just hang around and sell that on your own because what will happen is number one, you won't be able to put the stop loss in for anything less than this. So trying to think of what would be like this. Um, um, I don't know one off the top of my head, but there are some cases where your bid, which is the highest price that somebody's willing to buy it. Uh, and this is the ask, which is the, um, or this is the lowest price somebody's wanting to buy it for. This is the highest price somebody's willing to sell it for. So I'm asking you to buy it at this price and you're bidding to buy it at this price, okay? So this mid is like where I kind of play. Like I will come in and they usually say, buy the ass, sell the bid. I actually, I will come in and I will, um, oops, let me go back to I will try to get this price. I'll put in an yeah. order for this and I'll just leave it, right? And sometimes it'll come back and boom, hit that. And then next thing I know, like I had one contract, now I got two or three or whatever. However many I put in for here, I would rather have this because a lot of times when you go for the bid, you actually end up higher in your price. Because what happens is what I believe is happening is that if I put in the bid, I'm actually buying somebody's stop loss. So like when you hear about stop loss hunting, I think a little bit of that is also people just putting in the right price, you know, because if like, if I have an order to buy your thing and your, your order has triggered, then I have the right to buy your order. If, if, if your stop loss, um, like if you look at it on the, um, let's go back to limit. So if somebody's stop limit was at 83 and then their stop was at 82, right? Then that means that if I want this 82, it'll sell it to me because it dropped in, triggered this order and I'm available to buy this, right? So a lot of times, some contracts I'll buy them and I'm already up like $15 because the spread may be like 10 or 15 cents, right? And it will drop down, get my orders here and then, you know, turn back up. Or, it might, you know, sometimes it might just keep dropping too. But at that point, I'm okay because I, I already got it for cheaper than what most people were trying to go for. Because if you want it to happen quick, you would be going for the uh, buy the uh, ask and sell the bid. Because when I sell, I am selling at this price. I'm not looking to get this price. I want it to get out of my hands. So when I do sell, I will sell the bid. I don't always buy the ass. I never buy this. I don't, I don't trade this. I don't look at it. It just lets me know how high I can get in the moment. Um, but this is what I really focus on because I want this price. And I also, I only sell at this price. Obviously, I would rather sell at this price, but I sell at this price as a safety net because I sell at this price because if we happen to keep going, then my price won't get hit. Right. But if I put an order ahead of us and then you get something that takes off like Apple, well, you out of it, you're gone. It just it took your it went to your order and then it kept going to 134. Right. But if I put in my stop loss at 82 or 80 or something and then that thing retraces to 81 and then shoots off to 134, I'm still in the trade. And as it goes up, I'm following it. So as the day goes on, I'll come back in and I'll be like, oh my God, I just hit 140 on the thing. So I will come in and I'll be like, okay, 142 uh, stop. And maybe I'll say 135 on my uh, limit price. So if it hits this, it'll come back and it'll say, okay, we'll let you go. Because Weeple will actually do you a favor sometimes. Like if I do something like this, it'll trigger here and then maybe sell me at 140. Because it'll, it'll be like, well, look, we head near away. So let me go ahead and try to get you the best price. But for the most part, I don't do stop limits because I have been burned by them a couple of times. So I just do stops. But on the stops, like I said, um, this is um, this is risky as well because your stop could actually um, just trigger, it, like let's say your option is falling so rapidly, it may trigger an order that uh, where you could lose money or maybe not make any money at all, right? Because you weren't looking at what you were doing because sometimes the spread will still be these prices while the option took off. 
So you might come and be like, oh my God, stop loss, and then press enter. And you just literally put in a stop loss for what you bought it at, right? So uh, be careful when you always do that, slow down and come in here and say, hey, okay, I want my stop loss to be at the bid because it actually, like if, since we're at 84 right now, you can't have a stop loss of, um, or stop price of 83 because you're in this, okay? We're in that range. So if you put your stop at 83, you're already in a buying range. That means that your order will automatically trigger, which happens to a lot of Robinhood users because Robinhood won't tell you that. It'll just let you put it in and then boom, you sold it. And you're like, what just happened? You know, <laughs> but that's because uh, you, it didn't stop you. Webull won't allow you to do it. It'll be like, hey, if you, you can't put in a stop loss, uh, that's, um, it has to be lower than the actual bid. So I can only put in a stop loss in this case at 81 or 80 or somewhere lower, but that's what I'll do. I'll follow this up. And then as it's going up, I keep moving my stop loss up, moving my stop loss up. Cause if you turn around, I want my profit. I don't want to sit around and see what happens. And then 11 o'clock comes and I'm back to break even. And it's like, what did I even put my money up to risk for? All right. So always come in here. Uh, pay attention to the spread because if you've got, you know, 50 cents right here and 85 cents over here, that's too big of a spread. Because basically, in order for you to even put a stop loss, it's got to be below 50, which means that if we're at 84, you're automatically losing $30 just from trading on that stop loss. So you got to watch the trade or set a target ahead of it. Or, yeah, you just got to watch the trade. That's why I don't do. Um, options with large spreads. So if you see a spread that's over like 10 cents, like this number is 50 cents and this one's 85, that's too much. Because that means that this is going to be like 65 or 70 or something. And you might come in and buy this contract for 70. And then all of a sudden the price goes to 50 because it's in the range. And you just lost $20 just from entering this contract. And that'll happen. I've, I've bought contracts. <laughs> And then I'll be down 30. And I'm, then I bought some at the bid where I'll be up money, right? So pay attention to the spread on these because that is very important because once you enter that trade, you, you can't put a stop loss uh, but lower than this. So um, pay attention to that because you don't want it to be too wide. But um, I think that's really all I wanted to go over in terms of, uh, let me show people what happens if you try to sell a contract. You have an unlimited loss, okay? I don't want no part in that, okay? Your max profit is this. Um, that means that I'm taking the risk to sell this contract to make $85, but if it doesn't go in my favor, you can lose an unlimited amount of money. I'm not even sure why people sell, um, <laughs> um, sell these and stuff, but there are uh, what they call selling naked calls. I don't do it, but it's like a long-term type strategy. Let's say a stock fell. Let's say Apple fell all the way to 110. You uh -huh. can go in and sell a, a 110 contract. And basically what you would do is you would gain the premium of that contract upon expiration if Apple never went back to 110, right? So it's like insurance almost. It's like saying that I don't really wanna trade. I just have money to invest and- okay. I, so, I know that Apple won't come back to this price. So basically it'll hold your money. And then if Apple doesn't come back to that price, you get the premium, right? Uh, but it, it's, it's, a, it's for people that have like large amounts of capital because you're, you're actually gonna be buying it at the premium, right? So um, in this case, if you wanted the 143, like let's say, Apple's bottom was at 143. If you wanted to buy a sell call on this or sell a call, a covered call, I think is what they're called. Uh -huh. I'm pretty sure you would have to have 14,300 in your account because you have to multiply this by 100. Oh, you're oh. doing that on 100 shares. Okay. Yeah, I think it said, oh, you have to own 100 shares of uh, Apple also to do it. They'll cover the yeah. ones. So basically, it'll credit your account. And like, you don't even yeah. have to own the shares. It just says that, well, it's like you owned 100 shares, though. Like, so yeah. you have to multiply it by 100, right? And then it'll hold $14,300 out of your account. But if Apple never comes back to this price, you'll get whatever the premium is. Now, in this case, 
obviously the premium is not going to be high, but as Apple moves away from that price, you'll get whatever this premium is at the payout. So it allows you to like invest in stocks in a different way, you know, but, uh, and, and it allows you to just make just like a percentage on your money. Because like, my thing is if you got money to buy a hundred shares of Apple, just, just do it. <laughs> just do it. I mean, but um, it'll hold the, the money in your account and basically you get to profit off of the shares. Plus you get this premium. But that's like some, that's some, that's some real, like, that's some money moves. Uh, a friend taught me how to do it, but it was, it's just too much capital sitting for me. Like I don't have 14,000 to just like wait until the expiration date for Apple to not go back, you know, Yeah. but that's a whole different strategy. But, um, uh, but yeah, I do not sell because if that did go against them, they begin to lose that money. So I think I've seen people do this. I want they, they they call it um credit spreads where they yep. they they sell one and they buy like the ten dollar one. Yeah. They buy the they buy the one underneath and then they sell the one above it to like cover the cost and they kind of pray the goal is kind of, is the goal is to try to get it in between where it doesn't yep. go above and you then you take the credit. But I don't I don't do it as much because yeah. all they do is like twenty bucks and that's it. I'm like all right, I'll give you twenty dollars, but. Like you said, the max loss is like something that I, I, I've talked to people about. And like, yeah, if you don't do it properly, you can actually lose a lot of money on it. So Yeah, yeah man. I, I try to tell people, uh, you know, once I saw that, the whole like unlimited <laughs> loss, I'm like, nah, nah, that's not for me. But uh, when I buy, I already know what I can lose, right? My profit, yep. though, that unlimited profit, that's what I love about options. I'm not married to these things. I'm in it and I'm out. Right. So my profit is going to be unlimited, but my max loss is this. And if I know that, then I can actually protect myself as well with a stop loss. So when yep. people ask me, do I lose? It's like I only lose on the contracts that I actually was confident that they would go up and they totally didn't. Like, and that's in the case of like, I mean, I, I bought a put against Apple last week. I don't know why I did it, but I did it. But I was like, Apple definitely going to come down from here. And I should have known that I even told y'all July was a really good month for the NASDAQ. And that was just from what I experienced last year being a trader and winning, but also looking at the NASDAQ. I mean, the NASDAQ went up in July. It went down for June and went up in July. So it historically usually repeats itself and then it crashed in September. So I'm expecting September to be a bad month and I will be sitting there waiting to buy puts. Like just open hands, just come on, fall down to me, please. But always pay attention to that because that was another thing that I wanted to, to note is just using those indexes. But I discussed those in the last couple of classes, but I always want to stress that like using the indexes to show you, um, you know, um, when the market was going down, when the market was going up. So um, you can come here and get the NASDAQ, the S&P, whatever you want to look at, tap on it. Um, and then you can break it down in here. But um, that was all I really wanted to show you was uh, just really showing people that there's an option graph that you can see. You can compare it to the price of the stock. And you can say that based on what this options price has been doing in comparison to the price, that if this stock were to hit this price, I could potentially make this much money from holding this option, right? Right. So you can only do that if you understand the price movement of the, uh, the, the, the actual asset though. So you need to pay attention to how that asset is moving. And if like, like for me, I trade Alibaba, I'm comfortable when it gets down to 210, right? So I don't mind going in and buying a contract for 212 with some time, right? But then giving it some room to fall because I'm not going all in at this time as well, right? I want to see that there's upward momentum in my favor to move me out of this buy zone or this, uh, this level of support. But at the same time, I can go into the options and say that, well, dang, these options have dropped significantly. I mean, like, I'll show you just for instance, uh, Alibaba. And I'm not recommending anybody trade Alibaba. It's just, um, just a perfect example because I just happened to be watching it today. But today, like I said, it dropped off at the open from 215 to um, 209. Yeah. 
So I'm just going to show everybody that just got on the call. So if you look at what happened with Alibaba today, and these orange lines right here for everybody, these are alerts. Okay, so these are alerts that I have previously set. Uh, Y'all can see my Twitter be going in too. So I watch my Twitter. I get ideas from Twitter. Uh, and just you can just go chart them, right? You can do your own due diligence. But for me, here's Alibaba. It fell from 215 all the way to 209. So if you go look at the option, well, the 215 at the beginning of the day was in the money, right? Uh, but as the day went on, this 212 became actually out of the money, which is even better because you got a better chance to get even closer, right? So actually notice that volume too at the end of the day, the little spike right there. Let's see, um, what was that volume? Three, six, compared to just, you know, look at this, just a few volume, few volume, few volume, and then at the end of the day, boom, 3.63 thousand. Uh, but if you come look at this, it did the same thing, right? So in, in terms of what I'm looking at, if uh, we break this down to the one day, you can look at actually how the day went in trajectory, right? So this option actually started at 360. Well, we can see what exactly it started. So it opened at 375 and it dropped as low as, I want to say 160 or something. Yeah, this, as I remember, I was like, golly, I bought one at 200 and I was losing 40 bucks. And I was like, I'm going to buy another one. And I bought another one. That joke brought me up out of that hole. <laughs> but um, literally, I just came in here and looked at this and I was like, well, dang, I've, when you look at risk or reward, right? Well, I'm paying a hundred some dollars for a contract that could potentially go back to 375 or higher, right? Because 375 was just where we started the day, right? And if I know Alibaba has to give that back based on where we already ran. So if Alibaba already had a pretty great few days, right? It went from 230 and reverse from there and it's back to where we came from. Right. And so what's crazy is these gaps It just kept making gaps and these gaps came back and filled themselves. Right. So when you think about what could potentially happen from here, I don't know, but I'm ready, you know, because I know that if it falls, I'll be alerted. So I'm not scared of that, because if anything, I'll buy more here. Right. This is my ultimate buy zone in between these two lines. This is me coming in and saying, I wish you would. And if you do buy, cut. You're cut. <laughs> You're cut right here. This is where this is where I'm like, OK, all right. It's not working out. It's not working out and I'm not sticking around. But if we look at how even it hit my line, like on the T, I have not moved these lines, y'all. I have not adjusted them. These lines were here based on just previous stuff that happened around here. Right. We've been twerking around here. And I noticed this little close right there. That's what's significant. It's like these wicks tell you how far we went, but these closes tell you where we want to keep it. OK, so where the bar is tells me where we want to keep it. The wick just tells me where we went. Um, but if we can keep those bars above my bars, I'm feeling pretty confident. And you can see what happened. The wicks reached down here and then we actually closed right at my positions that I was holding, which gives me even more confidence that the positions that I held. Right. So I bought these um, and then when it ran up, I cut some shares and I was like, well, I'm a hold to just in case it keeps going to 250. Well, the thing reversed, but it's cool because the money I made was more than what I was going to be losing to hold these to, to keep an eye on Baba, right? Because what I don't want to do is have to wait on these alerts because there might be a lot of stuff falling and then alerts start raining in. But if I have these shares and I see I'm losing on my shares, well, I'm break even right here. This thing just came back to me, right? So if I look at my Alibaba shares and it says that I'm zero, maybe like negative on them too. Well, dang, I'm going to buy the option because I'm not selling my shares. You know, I'm pretty confident in holding these. So, all right, cool. If we back here, I'll take another ride. Let's go. Because these shares paid off for me. And I was in, I was only in the option for maybe a little bit of this. And then I, I didn't, like I said, I didn't even know it was going to hit 220 and that thing took off for 230. So, um, I'll, I told y'all even before that happened, I said, I've seen Alibaba down here and I know what it does from here. Uh, and it just keeps doing this. Look at it. It just keeps doing this. Come down, boom, come down, boom, come down, boom, come down, boom. We're here again. Right. So I'm just hoping it's not here. And then we fall even further. Right. Because that's what you don't want is for this pattern 
to end up being over here too. But, um, you know, this is a good sign to say that stochastic is, is resetting itself. Um, I like to see this all this blue being kind of maxed out down here because if we were right here and this blue was up here, <laughs> I, I, I might have to cut my shares. Um, but I'm feeling pretty confident about this. Uh, I don't, you know, it, just like over here, it took one, two, three, four, five days for it to break out. So you always consider the fact that when you're trading options, you need to give yourself time. I trade weeklies just because they're like lottos. They're a lot riskier. Uh, but if it's not working in my favor, I get out immediately. Um, but uh, you can always buy time. Time moves slower, but you won't lose as much money as fast as uh, getting a weekly, right? So, so some people will hold a weekly and that thing will just drain. Um, so keep that in mind when you're going for contracts, always take a look at the price history and say that, well, how many days did it take for us to get out of these types of range, right? Because even when you're looking over here, it took this just about the same amount of time. One, two, three, four, five days to get this. One, two, three, four, five days to get that, right? So you notice that it could take a week for you to get your money back. Uh, so you always want to make sure that you're buying enough time when you're uh, trading options. But um, yeah, I, I just really wanted to show you all the options graph that's in Webull because I definitely don't want you all stuck just like being like in Robinhood forced to buy the option in order to even see this information because it's readily available. Just scroll in here, tap which one you want to look at. And let's say we want to look at one with the most volume, 215. And you're like, well, what happened today? Well, the open interest was only 1,000 and the volume for the day was 15,000. So now we just got to see how many of these people left tomorrow because that's going to be the open interest and this will be zero and it'll start to count as the transactions happen, right? So we'll be able to see who's holding what uh, for tomorrow and moving forward, just always pay attention to this kind of stuff because you, if you open this up, let's say the open interest was two, and then we see 15,000 volume, right? Then we know that it's probably a lot of buying, right? But if, if this were 15,000 or even 10,000, well, I'm not really sure what this 15,000 is because, you know, maybe 10,000 sold and then 5,000 made a mistake, right? Uh, or in this case, like it was 1,000 open interest and 14,000 people joined them. Right. Or maybe 7,000 joined them and 7,000 was like, it's still going down. I'm out of here. You know, so tomorrow we'll we'll be able to see of how many of these people stayed on this team. Right. So uh, always keep up with these numbers if you're really because, like I say, these things, you don't need to just be hopping into a trade. You need to be very well aware of what you're getting yourself into. Uh, you need to know that, OK, well, I remember looking at this and. Open interest wasn't that high, and now it is. So I have that many more people on my team. And let's say the open interest was 15,000 right here. And then tomorrow, the volume was only 1,000. Know that these people ain't running, okay? Because if it's 15,000 open interest and only 1,000 volume for the day, that means that worst case scenario, 1,000 people left, right? Or 1,000 people joined, you know? So you just... You never really know, uh, but you want to assess it because the next day is going to tell you the difference in this, right? And so tomorrow we're going to see a different number and you'll be able to see what people are leaning towards and buying. But, but even in the case of this 215, right, it started the day at 292. Um, and so for the low of the day, it got to uh, 91. Well, here's the low right here. But, you know, at some point you caught that 88 and then boom, it starts to move back up. All right, so pay attention to these things. Uh, these charts are here for your disposal. And just like it, like I said, it helps kind of determine the risk to reward ratio. Because if I see that, let's say I open this up and I see that, um, you know, the open for today was only really right here. Like, um, what, what is this price? Uh, 225. Well, cool. I'm not, I don't want to go buy the 160 or 190 or whatever it is because I don't want to risk that much money just to make 30 or 40 or 50 bucks. Right. But if I can put up, you know, 80 or 100 bucks to possibly get this 375 or even 275, that's worth it. 
right? So come in here and take a look at these charts um, to get a good understanding. Like I said, some of these charts, when you come in, you may only see a month or max or something like that. I don't trade those. I don't trade them. They don't have enough data for me and I can't watch it actively because when they're in a month, you only see this big picture and you don't see this thing actively moving. Like when I can see the day chart, I can see this thing minute by minute and I can be like, oh my God, oh my God, it's dropping. Oh, well, this is the lowest it's been. I'm fine here, right? So even when it dropped again right here, I'd be like, okay, I'm, I, I might buy some more here and just keep leveraging up because you can see these dips and you can see the big picture too, right? But once you buy it on Robinhood, it's just like, you only get to see like this. And it's like, well, I don't know where it's been. You know, I don't know what kind of day it had before this and not sure really where it could go. But if you can look at the max, then you can see, well, dang, if, if Alibaba actually goes back to 230, my $100 could be $1,700. But that would have to happen before your expiration. So in this case, um, uh, Alibaba would have to hit um, 230 before July 9th in order for this contract to go from 194 back to 1700 right here. And how do I know that? Because that's based on the price that this was at the, on that particular date. So I was showing um, him earlier that if we look at this, hold this down, you can see that this date, 629 and 630 and 7.1. So at its highest came on 628. Right, so we go back to the um, call option, open that up. You can see that this date is right here. The 627, 628, they were all in this 1700 range right here, right? So if I know that if this, uh, this stock, if Alibaba goes back to this price, then I could potentially get this premium. Right. So that's how I determine whether or not it's worth it to me. Now, I'm not saying Alibaba is going to go back to 230. So I'm not hoping for 1700. But if Alibaba even went back to the price it was on 617 or the price it was just a couple of days ago. Right. So if it went back to just the price it was last week, <clears throat> six on seven one, I can get 625. Right. Um, so uh, but that's uh, in court relation to whatever the price of Alibaba was on that date. So maybe that's 220, right? So just make sure you're pairing these charts up and, um, you know, determining where you are on price for the premium as well as the stock. And that'll help you really set some goals. So you're not just saying that like, oh, I made a hundred and I want to be one of those people that makes a thousand, but you're like, okay, I can't do that because in order for me to make a thousand here, Alibaba has to go to $230. Is that possible? Probably not. Let me get out of here. OK, so this is to help you all really learn when to take your profits, because if you're sitting around waiting for a home run, you have to ask yourself, can this actually happen based on the price that this premium was when the price of the stock was a certain price? Right. Because if those don't match, then the chances of you getting more profits after you're already winning is slim to none. So this just helps you know when you should go ahead and just take those profits and be happy with what you got. Because I know I'm not going to make $1,000 off of this trade unless Alibaba goes back to 230, right? And if I don't think that's going to happen, then I can't assume that this trade is going to be my home run unless I buy enough contracts to make that kind of money. Right. So always consider those types of things and, and pay attention to that. But anybody have any questions? No questions? Nice. Well, I'm assuming that you all understand it now. So uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Always reach out as well. I'm going to go ahead and stop this recording. Let's see your stop.